Ahoy there listeners and welcome to the Captain's Horror Meltdown. My name is Cammy, and I will be your captain on this journey. I'm joined as always by uh, the ship's dance instructor. Ah, it's actually, it's actually one of my favourite jobs. Choreographer. You're a choreographer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I used to be quite involved in the actual dance part of it, but the knees are a bit wobbly these days. So, Yeah, I mean, it's difficult now, of course, because we used to have quite a large crew on the ship. Um, yeah. But we've been sailing for several years now, just the two of us. Yeah, yeah. It's a big ship to deal with as well. So, uh, what precious little time we have when we're not actually navigating, um, <laughs> we tend to be watching movies. But if we've got through all the movies that we need to watch, then, and we've got no side missions in action, then we do like to put together a little bit of a dance number. Yeah, I just like to, you know, let my hair down. Well, not really, because I don't have it, but. Um... Yeah, yeah. You're. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. I like to get a, I like to get a, a sweaty brow. I guess it's probably more. Yeah, and uh, I just like to just like to hang loose sometimes. I'm totally, especially well, in these both... times of worry, it's just nice to get out of your out of your head and uh, yeah, exactly. just lose yourself in the dance. Exactly, and um, a look that we both like to rock on the boat is um, featured in tonight's film. Actually, uh, the film that we're going to be discussing, mm-hmm. which is um, completely naked except for leg warmers. Yes, yes, it's. Yeah. Uh, totally. I mean, what? it's the most comfortable way, way to be when you're dancing. And it sometimes you'll just catch uh, catch a glimpse of you or a reflection of myself in our large mirrored wall. Yeah, and exactly. you're just like, what? It's what a glorious time to be alive. Exactly. I mean, other than, the, you know, the death and disease that we've got knocking around. I mean, exactly. If, the if you're ever like, you know, if you're kind of at the pits of despair, like, fuck, how long is this going to go on for? Just picture us naked, Stuck apart from leg warmers. Exactly. Just, just dancing <laughs> like there is no tomorrow. Exactly. Just absolutely fucking jacking it. Absolutely <laughs> dancing our tits off. So we're absolutely knackered, sweating our tits off. And then at the end of it, just going for it again yeah because yeah. we know we can do better because we're just we're just lost in music yeah absolutely lost <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> you... I, I well i mean well obviously we're uh now what are we week four of lockdown oh let's date check uh we are friday the 17th of april so that is well basically i was um fired from my job on the 17th of march yeah um so yeah we are pretty much now I guess that's probably three weeks of actual technical lockdown. Yeah, yeah. We're in, but yeah, here we are at the end of the Easter holidays, which um, usually a fun time for those of us with kids. We maybe go somewhere and we do something and we get out and we have a bit of fun in the yep. sort of uh, early spring sun. But we're all trapped inside, drinking heavily and, <laughs> and um, allowing our children way too much screen time. Yep, pretty much. Um, although it's, it's, it's been quite nice because we had the, obviously the, the homeschooling thing was uh, was going on. So it's, it's been quite nice to have a bit of a, a week a week's break from that. So you actually you kind of feel justified in like just yeah. letting everything go to shit. Um, you know, as long as they're not setting the place on fire or looking at me or talking to me or you know it's great yeah um so. get, i mean well that's like we were talking about briefly like as soon as, I, there, as soon as alexander's so ipad the, runs out of batteries i just hand him the switch yeah yeah <laughs> totally next device handed over yeah, yeah that's it i mean i think uh every single person that's listening will be experiencing the same it's just like peaks and troughs really isn't it yeah ups and downs much. good days bad days you know yeah and it is who yeah. knows who knows what day is going to be good who's what's going to be bad well that's it i mean i, I think it was there's no rhyme or reason. No, it was a couple of days ago. We actually had, well, I think it was a few. It was a few days ago. We actually had quite a nice day. It was quite sunny and fairly warm. Oh, it was glorious! Absolutely so we dug glorious. out the barbecue, and do you know what? At the end of that day, I was just like, "Fuck it, man! This is this is fine. This is absolutely fine." And then the next day was fucking bitterly cold and dreek as fuck and grey, and I was. I hit rock bottom. I was like, no, this is terrible. This is the worst thing yeah. in the world. Um, so I think the weather plays quite a large part in it for me, which is bad news in this country. Um, well, exactly. well, this country, well, mainly, we're mainly birthed in uh, Scotland, of course. Yep, yep. See anything around the yeah. shores of. Yep, yep. Yeah, so I mean, like the rest of the UK, well, down south was, you know, they were um, 
basically scorching mm-hmm. in glorious weather. And uh, we had we were out like like properly fucking sweating our tits off, and it was uh, mighty sixteen degrees. <laughs> yeah, totally. And it's now straight back down to like close to freezing through the night. The heating is right back on. Yeah, a fucking wind that will cut you in half. I wouldn't even apologise about it. It's a bastard. Yeah, it's um, so. Yeah, bastard. unfortunately, the weather for me is playing because it's actually like I quite enjoy. Yeah, even going out for like a, the, the daily bit of walk, exercise, or whatever. Yeah, and Gov- uh, government mandated exercise. Yeah, yeah, it's just a yep. different ball game when it's like pretty doer because like there's like there's nobody about outside really, so that's kind of odd. And then like all the supermarkets have got like fucking table over them to say stay this far you've got to walk this way around the supermarket and so I, we went out for a walk today it was like deadly quiet um and normally i wouldn't go into any kind of shop with the kids but we were walking past a, a wee sainsbury's and it was completely dead inside it was like well fuck it i'll just go and grab a few things um so i please, said to the kids you like do please you, for yourself uh, actually no amazingly no, enough well, um, surprising. it's surprising um <clears throat> but yeah it was weird because so I asked the kids if they wanted to come in because, like, uh, in a way, I was like, well, "I'm only be like a minute. I'm quite happy just leave them outside the shop." Um, they're like, "No, we'll come in." I was like, "Right, fine. Well, you've got to stay right behind me. Don't piss around." Blah blah blah. Um, and, like Alexander was in there for thirty seconds. He was like, "I want to get out." I think it was just the vibe of it, just the vibe of the whole thing. It was like this. This, vibe. this isn't what yeah. this isn't what a shop is usually like, and I don't like it, and it's weird, nah. and it's fucking me off. It's not fun. Everyone's tense in here. It's brutal. Yeah, there's people with face masks on. Yeah. Don't like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Crazy God. times. Um, crazy times indeed. But at least in amongst all those crazy times, <laughs> we are watching. Um, you're lost for words. Not terrible films. <laughs> yeah, lots. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So where are we with this? So, so our last film was a uh, climax. Yep. Absolutely nuts. I think we both we both gave it two thumbs up, but we also um, <laughs> acknowledged that it was absolutely tense as fuck. Yeah. It was a horrible experience watching it, but it was a mesmerising and wonderful experience. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, I've actually dipped back in a couple of times since then. Man, I can believe it. Yeah, which yeah. is insane. Absolutely. It's like, wow, absolutely he's insane. gone in there quite quickly. This is, this is something. Totally. For me, I think, oh, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, yeah, fair play to you. <laughs> it's just sitting there on Netflix, that's the thing. I mean, you're totally hammered and you're just like, oh, what am I going to watch? It's like, oh, I'll stick on one of the dance routines from um, Climax. <laughs> Probably. You don't have to go for the full madness. You can just go in for the dance just routines. Just dip in and out. So we decided that we were going to go for uh, another dance-related number. Yeah. Um, that was going to be Link in the Chain. And uh, I actually don't even remember where I saw this from because I didn't know about this film before. I didn't know about it. I think <clears throat> possibly we were just a possibly a wild Google search of dance based horror films. films. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Um, so we we've uh, decided to go for Murder Rock. Yep. from 1984 Oof. by Lucio Fulci. Um, certainly the version looks like it's had a million names. Um, yeah. Uh, certainly the version that I watched um, was titled Murder Rock. Yeah. Um, colon, Dancing Death. Yes. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get in here yeah. with the letterboxed. It's quite a long one, this one. Oh, is it? Which is... That surprises me. Mind-boggling. <laughs> mind-boggling. But I will also say that um, if you go to Wikipedia and look up Murder Rock I, and look at the synopsis... Yeah. It's huge. It's massive. It's like a blow by blow account. Huge. And we'll get we'll get into that in a minute anyway. But um, okay, here we go. Murder Rock, Dancing Death, nineteen eighty four, directed by Lucio Fulci. The world of dance can be brutal. The rehearsals are grueling, the competition is fierce. At the Arts for Living Centre in New York City, the best of the best are dying for a part in a major production, but only a select few will be chosen. The selection process seems to be at the hands of a mysterious killer who pierces women's bare breasts with a hat pin puncturing their hearts. Ambition and jealousy appear to be the motive, which makes everyone a suspect. Well, there you go. I mean, 
a lengthy synopsis there, but bang on. Yep, yep. It's literally all um, you need to know about the film. Um, exactly. You're going to know whether you're going to want to watch it or not just from a, a, a who directed it and B that synopsis really. Or C watching the trailer. Yes, the trailer. Well, it was a trailer that ensnared both of us, really, wasn't it? It was, it was. It was, uh, it was uh, an assault. In Mesmerizing. The Mesmerizing. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I mean, we usually sort of with our uh, memories of the film, but I mean, I think it's uh, safe to say that neither of us actually knew about this film. Nope, but it was a, complete, that, a mystery to me until you mentioned it. Yeah, and, like it, it, it was a bit of a mystery to me as well. And um, now, I. But I think we should we should maybe just discuss Lucy Fulci for a second. I think that's fair. I think that's probably a good way. It's also a bit of a shame we're going in. Our first Lucy Fulci mention is is this. Is this exactly mm. exactly? I think it is. And like I would also say, this is a film that's not available in the UK. No, no. Uh, so we had to watch the US version. But um, I would say so. Lucy Fulci. I think our experience of Lucy Fulci is basically entangled I think so So, as my memory has it you possibly you and I together rented Zombie Flesh Eaters yeah that sounds about right probably <clears throat> the post VRA cut Vepco release yep yep now I, I remember it being quite a major moment in our cinematic um, viewing uh, our sort of hi- our history with horror, yeah. Because a, it was fucking incredible. B, it was quite clearly cut, yeah. And I remember being like, "What the fuck is, like, <laughs> this has definitely been cut." And like, what are we not getting to see? Yeah, yeah. And I want to see it. Yeah. And C, it had a trailer at the start for Shogun Assassin, which sent me on a like years long mission to try and find an uncut copy Honestly, of Shogun Assassin. That was that was almost like a full time job. <laughs> it totally that trailer <laughs> absolutely fucking blew my mind. I just remember before we even got to Zombie Flesh Years being like, What the fuck is that? Well I I've, need my to rental get hold money of that. has been worthwhile already. Oh man, totally. <laughs> Totally shit. I mean, that trailer alone made it worth the money. I can't remember if you got that from Doig or if it came from the dodgy video guy. It might have come from Gala. I think, I Do you remember that Gala. weird video shop? I think it yeah. was Gala because I just I seem to yeah that was. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. Um, I can't was, remember either. Good old was like, uh, yeah. This was this was a, a town that was for us quite a quite quite a large town considering the places we lived in. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So they had a, a video, or like a proper video shop. Um, proper video shop, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure like uh, Phenomena, I'm pretty sure that was the first time I got that out was in there. Yeah, the old Keeper's copy. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I mean, Pass yeah, video. Zombie Flesh Eaters, I think that was definitely one of those gateway films, the curiosity. That was one of the things that really piqued our cu- uh, curiosity of like, wow, let's, what I want, I need to see this uncut somehow or other. I need to find this. Uh, yeah, and that, I think it was. It might might even have been the film, or definitely one of the top films that sent us down that kind of route of finding shonky VHS copies of uncut stuff. Yeah, um, totally. And I remember being I, I like think very kind of shocked by we actually saw the uncut version. It was like holy fucking shit! You know, the eye piercing, especially <laughs> just like what? Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. And I think that might have been one of the earliest. I remember um, because. Sort of seeing things like this got us both into Dark Side magazine, and then yeah. through Dark Side magazine, through the classified ads and Dark Side, we started getting in touch with people. And then we are like the, the first dodgy video guy that we got stuff off was a guy called Kev. And do you remember we we wrote off a letter to him, and the first letter that came back was a letter from him saying, "I've just been busted. Yeah, I've lost everything. Um, I'm getting prosecuted." Um, don't don't worry. You got in touch with us after you got in touch with me after this all happened. So your name's not in a book or anything like that. Shit, I mean, we were probably like twelve or thirteen or something. Like absolutely that. unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. Imagine that. Imagine being like whipped, 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 imagine being whipped in a register at that kind of age. Holy <laughs> totally, shit! Totally, and it was like a handwritten note. I remember it, and then, and then, so we were like, oh shit. Well, that's like going nowhere and then remember we got a letter back 
so unprompted yep, totally. from him saying, I've got a bunch of tapes together again. I'm back on the go. Yeah, unbelievable. Here just we been, go. been busting, like fucking straight back in. Boof. Straight back in there. <laughs> straight back in Is there. That, and we started, when you say, right, I mean, fucking hell. Wow, how how times have changed we wrote a letter an actual <laughs> physical letter totally. put a totally. stamp on the front of an envelope and sent that mother away we didn't you know totally. we didn't call anyone we didn't email anyone we didn't manage we didn't <laughs> facebook anybody any of that shit it was like a physical motherfucking letter please sir may we have some videos Oh, it's insane, and we got some wild shit from him as well. We certainly some did. Wild shit. Was it? Was it him? We, we did get, get, get guinea pig from we him. We got guinea pig too. Oh off my him, yeah. god! Wow, that was something. <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, that was uh, wow. I mean, that had, I had to be the pinnacle of like, what the fuck have we done? What, what have we bought? Is this real or is this not real? <laughs> and like such a bad like fifth generation copy that it just looked like the most dodgy shit yeah, you've ever seen it, in your life. Well, that was it. It was yeah. It was wow. a. It was VHS. B. It was degraded <laughs> to fuck. So you can imagine what that was like. And yeah. So it actually, you know, I bet obviously if you saw it Blu-ray or whatever these days, you'd be like, well, fake as fuck. But back well, in exactly. those days when the resolution was god awful it was totally questionable oh totally man totally i remember even watching like quite near start of that there's a a bit where he it, it cuts ahead of a chicken but i mean when you see it now you're like well it's quite clear that he's not actually cutting ahead of a chicken yeah. it's just like cutting away but i remember even at the time just being like oh man what the fuck have we bought yeah like, especially the age what? we were at as well totally what is this i mean we were, we were really too early wild. into our career to be forced that way like that. too early oh, jesus christ I mean, way too early shit god well i mean well so that was our like gateway into fulci and then yeah. i think that i think basically once we'd got hooked on fulci it was like a sort of like what can we get next but i mean really i don't think we strayed that far from the classics really to start with no. so zombie flesh years uh city of the dead um house by the cemetery and the beyond i think City of the Dead, I probably didn't see till much later, actually. That seemed to be a harder one to come by. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, fucking loved House by the Cemetery. Loved The Beyond. I've always... The Beyond's like, incredible. I still, yeah, yeah. The, the Beyond is incredible. <clears throat> I still fucking love The Beyond. Absolute madness. Absolutely. And that's the that's the beauty of Lucio Fulci as well. Like, great, great films, but utter bobbins. Just absolute <laughs> yeah. madness. I mean, the Beyond makes no sense at all, but... No, it's classic Italian madness, really. I mean, it's oh, like, totally. the plot is just thrown up into the air and then, like, shot to pieces, you know, and it, oh, it yeah. falls down in random pieces and you're like, should we piece this back together? No, fuck it, we'll just read it. Ah, we'll just read it as it cares. comes down out of the air. Who gives a fuck? Let's just keep galloping towards the uh, 87 minute runtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Throw in some insane <laughs> gore scenes and everyone's fucking happy. Yeah, totally. And it was probably around the time that we discovered Fulci as well that we started noticing. Well, I guess we'd already started uh, following Savini, but like started following um, uh, De Rossi as well, yeah. the uh, Fulci's like uh, gore meister, special effects guy, and started really getting into that whole sort of scene. But then, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess we were only the only real way to sort of find out what was people weren't really writing books about these directors or books about these films, so you're point, reading yeah. about it in fanzines and magazines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you were really only reading about the stuff that was more accessible, and things like this had completely slipped, you know like through the net for me yeah i mean um when did uh when did fulci do um the thing that this reminded me of a bit was the uh what's the crazy one he did with the serial killer with the uh the duck voice the new york ripper no wait well, this is this is the film we did after that <clears throat> oh right okay well it kind of makes sense i mean oh, god did you maybe get a vibe that fulci was like um I'm in New York, I'm going to make it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Because obviously, I mean, one thing to say about Murder Rock is it's, um, you know, there's very little gore in it, but like next to none. Oh, almost really. none. Almost none. Yeah. Almost none. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's coming back off what is arguably, maybe not even arguably, just his cruelest, most horrible film. <clears throat> yeah. Which is nasty and gory and fucking mean spirited, everything rolled into one. And yeah. then I think he got yeah, he got a lot of shit for it as well. Um, and then he comes back with this, which I don't know if it's a 
product of the criticism he got or the general hatred that was thrown at him for it? Um, I don't know. It feels like I feel. I, I think I'd quite like to read a bit more into what the background to this film was because it almost feels like it's kind of like a giallo, yeah, yeah, like but mixed with a sort of musical stroke dance movie, yeah. And it's it's, it's kind it's of utterly bizarre. It, it feels like it probably wasn't anything. It feels like none of the film was really to do with him. Yeah, I I get the feeling that something. Yeah. <sighs> I think there was other forces at play without without question. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean Fulci is not Fulci. He's not making that film on purpose. No, he's just not. <laughs> so, no. so I think, no. uh, yeah, I think he's probably been diluted quite a bit. I mean, I, I'm sure I read something that yeah, the film was kind of the tact of it was changed um, during the or before the kind of production process, um, and so you kind of ended up with this kind of amazingly glossy as well. I mean. I think I mentioned to you one of the one of the brief messages we sent. It's like the lighting is fucking incredible through it, but like <laughs> totally. totally unworldly though as well. I mean, like it's got some really kind of noir esque kind of lighting going on, and you know, lots of faces shadowed, but like some beautiful light cast upon it, and these kind of sort of soft, soft, what well, <clears throat> soft? Not not bad soft, but kind of intentionally soft kind of details, and uh, it's, it's actually it's really quite interesting to look at um yeah, yeah in terms totally. of the, the yeah. style of it and the, and, and the the quality of it um and i don't know much chat in the blu-ray but i mean <clears throat> the i mean the picture is pretty fucking incredible for a film that i didn't even know existed <laughs> well exactly i know and that's the thing i mean these like it really is quite incredible i mean well, i know there's like you know a world you know do you know thousands and thousands of films that are never going to see the light of day again yeah. that you know were out on VHS back in the day because people were punning out whatever they could because they cared the rights to and I know that stuff's more expensive to get hold of nowadays and you know rights holders know what's going to sell a bit more and a bit more aware of it but I mean stuff like that I mean the fact that something like this is getting released on Blu-ray nowadays is just like insanity it is absolutely really. wild I, mean, I cannot believe what, si- totally what size of audience does this have I mean Jesus Christ well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I was surprised that Shameless or maybe 88 or someone hadn't put this out in the UK for a second. But then I thought, I mean, there's loads of Fulci films that aren't out in the UK. So, I mean, why would anyone take the risk on this? I mean, the, the actual numbers that these, that's the thing. It's quite easy to get sort of like caught up when you're reading forums and stuff um, and seeing people talking about it. You know, it, it happens a lot when people are talking about Code Red stuff. And, you know, equally with Arrow and all the rest as well, people saying, you know, why don't they release this? It would obviously sell thousands. I think people, like, very, very much overestimate, like, yeah. the, the actual audience for any of this stuff at all. Totally. <clears throat> I mean, really. And, you know, obviously the, the audience for physical media itself is probably getting a little bit hardcore now as well. So add that yeah. to the mix, and you're like, Jesus. I mean, if I was running a Blu-ray company, there's no fucking way I would release this. Absolutely no danger. It's just, I mean, whatever way you look at it, it's massively lesser of Fulci as, as far as what he's known for. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's way off peak Fulci. It's right down the, right down the pyramid I mean, of Fulci. I not believe you just, imagine you just got into Fulci and, like, watched Zombie Flesh Eaters and then sort of seen this You're somewhere like, in a oh, shop. Murder Rock. Most of that, wow, woofed. And then put it on, like, Check holy out. shit. Yeah, man. You know, it's kind of like well, discovering your favourite band in the 70s and then checking out some of their 80s material. Like, oh, God, what happened? God, totally. They're sort of, like, completely lost... 90s material yeah. where like literally 10 people were going to their gigs <laughs> Jesus Christ God so I mean which I mean if you think about it I mean fuck we went to see Maiden in the Barlands mm-hmm. in their fucking like you know like Twilight years really <clears throat> well the down- when, uh, it, was, when, it was the downward spiral yeah please- well, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. You you know, you go from like a band selling out, you know, like you know, tens of thousands of tickets in you know South America and stuff to playing less than two thousand people in the Barlands. Yeah, it's insanity. Yeah, I was but, saying, I, 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 and that, that that's what it kind of feels like with this. You know, what I mean, it's like you know, one of those like you know, real sort of low points for him. Yeah, I think unfortunately, he didn't. I mean, unlike Maiden, who have just gone kind of stratospheric again. Um, 
Fulci, this was kind of a bit of a this was it. This was the the end of the game for him, really. I think. Um, yeah, I mean, like post this, I liked uh, Cat in the Brain, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's just like utterly wigged out. I mean, I think that's like you know that that is the the true tail end of uh, of the game for him, really. Yeah. Um, with him starring uh, as himself in it, <laughs> just losing the plot altogether. Yeah. Jesus God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean. Um, Will we will we give a little bit of chat about the film? Let's I mean, get into, let's get some general impressions. Obviously, I mean, it's it's uh, we're we're uh, we're on the chain, so we ain't going to give away too many details. So I, I think it's just like a general impression of this, which is yeah. I mean, I would say that um, I am a fan of terrible films. Yes. Yep. No two ways about it. I love a shit movie. I absolutely love a shit movie. Yep. I've got quite high tolerance for it. <laughs> um, and um, I would say that this film completely amused me the whole way through. There was a big dip in the... There was a dip in the sort of like... Definitely a dip in the second half. Yeah. It gets off to an absolutely rollicking start. It does. I love a big musical number. I know you it's, do. I know it's you do. wild. Lots of dancing. Lots of lycra. I would say that uh, it's not very PC these days, but I mean, shit, if you're... <laughs> There's a lot of nudity there in this is film a lot. as well. If you're uh, if you're um, into the female form, you'll be pleasantly surprised by this film. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, hip thrusting and uh, bare breast getting stabbed by a hatpin, which has to be one of the most bizarre murder I was... weapons to be used through an entire film. Yeah, really. <clears throat> very confused didn't by it. Really get it. And there, um, there was no kind of like, oh, here's why it's being used. Really, it's like no, it's like a, no. His favourite hat pin, uh, <laughs> none of that business. I have to say, it's, oh my god! I mean, the dance sections of which there are many, and <laughs> they just kind of blaze in from nowhere. Um, I mean, oh, you just couldn't get away with it these days. It's absolutely incredible. Just like close up tits and ass shots. Oh, totally! Like wild camera zooms, yeah. just like from you know a sort of like wide shot mm-hmm. of like you know. 20 dancers all working in unison to just an instant, like, in-camera zoom onto a set of hooters. Yep, crash zoom into tits. Uh, just like, woofed, okay. I wonder if that was in the, the shooting script. Um, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> crash cut into tits. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, yeah, you just... The, the stage directions for the day. Yeah, God. it's yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's a bit of a showgirls vibe to it at that point. Um it does have a bit of a showgirls vibe to it at that point as well. There's also there's like a there's that like wild solo like performance that's going mm-hmm. on as well mm-hmm. where the girl's dancing in the club, but you don't really see that she's dancing in a club. Like is that an audition? Is she dancing in a club for people? There's not really it's so sparse as well at so many points that you're just like, What is actually going on here? Yeah. Like yep. is this a dream sequence or something? Or what like I don't really know what's happening. We should, we should. I think we should probably qualify that by saying we had just watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre two in our kind of lockdown meltdown fiasco, and yeah. there might have been a couple of <clears throat> drinks involved. There might have been a couple of beers involved. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say with the film there are this film there are some. I mean, it, it feels like it's a fairly standard, bog standard, like identical um, giallo plot. In terms yeah. of, you know, black gloves, bumbling you know, p- cops, p- bumbling cops, yeah. police on the case, like you know, fault red herrings all over the place and stuff. And I mean, it kind of plays out pretty, pretty typically. But at the same time, there's a lot of stuff going on where you're like, I don't know what the f- I don't understand. Yeah, I just don't understand. Like the yeah. Ray Lovelock's character, like <laughs> I don't. She dreamt about him and then finds him. How did she find him? How did he get into a relationship so quickly? What the fuck is going on? Like, really, it is like... It, um, yeah, it is crammed with that. It's all over the shop. Yeah. Really all over the shop. I think, you shop. know, it's, I mean, if you're, you know, if, if you're a fan of Italian directors in general, it won't surprise you that it's all over the you shop. You won't be phased at all. I mean, if you're into, if you're, if you're into this sort of stuff, you're just going to be completely unfazed. By the absolute nonsense involved. Yeah. Um, fairly did seem to be, yeah, he's w- dubbing pretty standard for. Yeah, the, it wasn't that bad, to be honest. Reasonably okay. Yeah. Um, like, main characters are all, like, fine, really. Um, some, like, 
quite a lot of recognisable faces in it anyway. Yeah, I think it's quite a lot of uh, uh, Fulci's old guard are in this one. Um, yeah, quite recognisable. Fulci appearing in it himself yeah. as a character that we've I've got no idea who the fuck he was. Yep. He's just randomly phoned up. <laughs> no explanation of who he is or what's going on at all. Uh, but he seems to have lots of information and then that's it. He, away he goes again. Um, I, I, I do kind of wonder if like it was being edited by someone and then Fulci would just break into the studio drunk at night and start fucking rehashing everything. And then the editor goes in the next Possibly. day and goes like, what happened? But it's just so confusing now. He's like, I can't do anything with it. I'm just going to I'm just gonna go with it. And he, and he knows Filch is coming in drunk at night, like out of his tits, yeah. just messing with stuff. He's like, that's fine. He's I'm just, just, like, I'm just it, gonna I'm gonna Yeah, I don't care. I'll just, exactly. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Um, the other, uh, the I mean, there's really not much. Again, I will say, that, like, Blood-wise, hardly any blood at all. Mm -hmm. Like, almost zero blood. I mean, people are literally stabbed in the heart once slowly by a hat pin. Yeah. Which leaves a small trace of blood. But um, the other thing I would say that is of note with this film is that um, the soundtrack is by Keith Emerson. Yeah, I think the soundtrack was, like, <laughs> the biggest interesting point for me. It is. Jesus. Oof, I mean, it's fun <laughs> it's I mean that's the thing we're talking so we're talking 84 so really we're talking in the states we're talking well post disco yeah but this is like a sort of but I mean Europe's still probably still in the grips of that kind of that kind of shenanigans yeah um, and it's just this weird sort of like disco prog <laughs> <laughs> um, electronic madness uh, that absolutely permeates the film. I'll tell you uh, one other thing that's just come to my mind. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that neither of us have any notes here, so this is pretty free ranging. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the other thing, the the school that the film is set in has this really fucking insane. I'd like to know the background of it, but like, um, fifteen minutes before the school closes. It goes into a sort of lockdown mode where the lights flash on and off. There's a voice which is clearly oh, yeah. supposed to be a robotic voice, but it's just a woman speaking, <laughs> saying the school is going to close in 15 minutes. Uh, the building will be locked down in 15 minutes if you have 15 minutes to evacuate the building or whatever. And it's basically just like the lights switching on and off for dramatic effect, but it is one of the wildest. Like, I, I was like on the edge of my sofa just like what the <laughs> fuck is going on here what is happening jesus oh my god yeah it's <clears throat> i think i was like that through a lot of the film i think almost the whole film actually yeah, I, mean, I, like, I, had, I had to watch the second part tonight because um <clears throat> i think i got to like half 11 last night it's like no, i'm actually tired i'm gonna have to jack this in um so yeah, finished off. I got through the whole thing in, the, in one second, which is uh, quite impressive. Yeah, no, I think I, I could I could feel myself getting sleepy. I was like, I'll just, I'm just, I know, I know where this is going. This ends up with me waking up at ten past four on the couch in the office. Shit, what happened? Oh, oh. And then crawling up God. to bed, hoping there's been no madness with the kids. Otherwise, I'll get the blame for You're being oh, for being God asleep in the office. Oh, um, not even that drunk, but I was just fucking tired. Just fucking tired um, but I've got to be honest I did feel quite a lot of life through the film it's quite it's a lively movie it's um, it is a lively movie and <laughs> it's, you know it's it's um, it's feelings it's it's shitness are kind of what makes it fun yeah it's kind of it is one of those like so bad it's good films in a way yeah um, it's certainly the one thing you can never call it is a good film. No. It's absolutely terrible. Yeah, that was no question I mean, about like, it. I mean, like, woefully bad. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's probably, I've not actually checked, but I'm sure it's probably available on YouTube or something like that. Oh, without and doubt, without doubt. I would recommend, uh, will we get to the recommendation process? I mean, I think we've Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else I'd like to say about it. Uh, about? Not massively. Or oh. <laughs> well, it must hold the record, the absolute record for most reoccurrences of the same song in a film. Oh yeah, definitely. Holy Over, ev shit. Every every ten minutes, just that song comes back in. Just wow, back in comes thumping back in. Bang. Again. I think they even fucking finished the film with this. Like, what is going on? 
Um, so yeah, obviously that song must have cost, cost a couple of quid to put together because they use it liberally. I think oh, yeah. I would say um, totally. Could have get the money's worth from it. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, for me, I I kind of thought it was quite fun, and I, I enjoyed watching it. But in my honest heart of hearts, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm oh God. I mean, I might watch it again, but I, I wouldn't put it on. If someone else put it on, I might sit and watch it. But the chances of me putting it on again, if I'm in the office by myself, thinking, "Hey, let's put on a film," it's probably not going to be Murder Rock. I would say the chance of me putting it on again are pretty much zero if it's just me. Um, I may show it to somebody for a laugh. Yeah, I think that's what I can imagine if we were at a meltdown and we were all together, there's a bunch of us, we are all a bit pissed, we might put it on for a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Certainly a film that you could talk your way through quite happily Without, because... Without uh, missing a thing. The, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you won't miss anything. You you catch up on all the dancing, and the uh, plot is just fucking absolute non-existent. And what is there is absolute gibberish. Yep. Um, that said, can I give it two thumbs down? No, surely not. I think I'm going to give one thumb across and one thumb down. I mean, it's a bad, bad movie, but there's a lot to be entertained by here. And even just seeing uh, Fulci himself, yeah, uh, yeah. it's good, always good to see Ray Lovelock, Ray Lovelock, <laughs> Ray Lovelock, <laughs> and uh, the lead lead woman. It's uh, great as well. Actually, do you know what? Like weirdly, one of the things I thought last night. Um, what was she called? Olga Karlatos. I think she was Greek. Um, the well, she was, was Greek. Was like, she different now. Uh, no, I think she's still great. Okay, um, okay. One of the things I thought when I was watching it was there's a lot of like young dancers in it. They're obviously in their like late teens, early twenties. I always find it difficult to tell in, in that kind of then, in that sort of like era of film. But well, everyone's got like now, sort of like wild, insane hairstyles. So like she could be anywhere between fifteen and thirty six. Well, totally. But I thought it was quite refreshing that uh, to see that uh, Ray Lovelock and uh, Olga Karlatos, uh, the the leads, um, feel like they're at least our age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's older, true. P- older, possibly. Yeah, older, possibly. It was quite nice, and he's 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 really fucking jacked in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean he's proper fucking jacked. He's got a pretty cool looking him. I have to say, I do. He I does. do quite enjoy. Yeah. He's got like a real kind of screen presence, which I've got to tip a hat to that. Um, yeah, even totally. in the midst of having of, to put uh, across complete madness. Well, big fan. Actually, we've, we've picked the next one in the chain, but we could have gone with uh, Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is my uh, favourite Lee Lovelock uh, joint. Um, love a zombie film set in the uh, Scottish, in the English Lake District. Yep, yep. It's, I mean, it's a right. classic location for it. Tremendous. Yeah. Absolutely tremendous. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going for one thumb down, one thumb across. Um, I'll, I'll join in that. One thumb down because. As I said, I'd never put it on again. One of them across because I found things to enjoy in it. I didn't hate it. Um, yeah. It's as you say, it's just quite obviously not a good film. Not to say it's badly made, but yeah, it's but just it's the just... contents were absolute gubbins, rubbish. And no, I mean the thing is, you you come to a legit film, you want a bit of gore as well, aren't you? Really, mm-hmm. and there's just nothing there. You know, it's just completely, uh, completely tepid, I guess. But uh, there you go. Um, we uh, Blu-ray, Blu-ray wise, I mean it. Like, yeah, the the picture quality is way better than really either of us should have expected from something yeah, was, this obscure. I was quite surprised. This age. To be honest, I was There's quite surprised. No, yeah, I mean, um, it does look fantastic, uh, which is good to see. I certainly wouldn't quibble with anything about that at all. Now, um, interestingly, we we maybe have a tiny bit of chat. Oh. In our, uh, what would James Furman think? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think we'll probably dispense with theme tunes for Blu ray and James Furman, but yeah, yeah, my, I think, yeah, my immediate, I think the first kill that was just like, oh, I, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, one of James Furman's really big, big, big bugbears was um, the sight of blood and breasts yep. together, yep. which he claimed he'd been told by psychologists was a rape trigger. Um, and um, so he instantly, it was an instant cut for anything like that. Yep. Um, at all, uh, it was just uh, it, it had to be cut, and uh, I so I think that this just wouldn't have got by really. Yeah, yeah. 
because uh, there's no real way to do that. I don't know if it ever was released. I'm just having a quick look on the um, no. on the on the website BBFC, but I can't actually see if um, if um, let's see, let's see Fulci. Um, sorry, guys, it's like exciting podcasting, <laughs> really. Eh? Like uh, someone yeah, googling something. No, I had a quick look on my kind of go to of. Uh, Melon farmers and uh, see, I, 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 unless I missed it last night in my kind of haze, um, I, I didn't see anything that was. No, I think this has just there. not been released over here. Um, and obviously, uh, since it came out in 1984 in the cinema, by the time it actually came out on video over here, it would have been post Video Ratings Act, so yeah. like, uh, it would have had to go through the BBFC. Uh, yeah, I think it's just never been released over here. Um, it, it may be something that like uh, UK fans are clamouring for, but I really can't see it. No, the ma- um, mad at people. All. Clamoured for by mad yeah. people. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is like with like uh, importing so easy these days, I mean, really, effectively, for someone in a sort of niche um, sort of film market, like, you know, like we are really it's completely irrelevant now yeah, with yeah. streaming and the ability to import anything as well. And I mean, really, you're going to be able to import anything as well uh, nowadays. You're not going to, even if something got stopped, they would have to prove that it was obscene yeah, for yeah. you to not get it forwarded on again. And I mean, do they have still have a list of things? Do they actually give a shit? I mean, how many? Like, how how minimal is the market for anything horror related in terms of censorship these days? Yeah, you know? I mean, I think <clears throat> I think the only thing I oh, it's not even recent memory, but I, think I did I did remember getting a August Underground Mordom from the states, and I think that was on a list. So right. I was like, if they open that, that's getting taken. But thankfully, mm. they didn't. I, I can't remember the name of it. the label I used to get stuff from. But, um, but yeah, that was the only one I was ever going like, oh, that might get seized. But I mean, I mean, God knows what you'd have to try and get imported now for it to be seized. I mean, just probably stuff that has been made by underhand criminals, I should imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd imagine so, really, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. There's no... I really, there's no, I mean, shit, I mean, the amount of stuff that's coming through the post every day into the country, there's no way they're going to be checking everything. No. Um, I think I can't, and, I, mean, I mean, I can't remember the, ah, oh man, I wish I could remember the name of the, the company I was, I got things from. Most of the stuff was like, you know, fairly just random stuff. But they, the, I think, I don't, I don't think it was the film that was on the list, it was the company that was on a list. So basically anything that came from this company into the UK we'd, was we'd get We'd get checked. Yeah, yeah that, that used to be the case. That did used to be the case with a couple of companies. I remember that. Um, I remember, yeah, there was one, I can't remember who it was as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, one company that if you ordered from them, they basically they got wise to any packaging by them. I mean, I get stuff that sent through all the time by Vinegar Syndrome. That's every time Vinegar Syndrome sends stuff through, it's always got tape. It's always taped up with vinegar syndrome tape, so there'd be no question that there's stuff coming from them. Yeah, and I mean, they release quite a lot of uh, old X-rated hardcore porn stuff, like sort of vintage porn stuff yeah, and all that. Yeah, like nothing's ever been stopped or seized or anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I think it was one time I went to like, pick up something from the <laughs> something from the uh, local kind of post office depot, and the guy like went out to get the box. He was like, "Oh, customs have been in this." <laughs> Uh, it was always like, oh, open the box, oh, everything's still there. Excellent. What have you got missing? Oh, God. Oh, God. It's madness, isn't it? But even, even this was like, we were talking, oh, man, probably 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Um, but yeah, yeah, I can't imagine anything being stopped these days unless it's like properly insane. Yep. Um, so there we go, I guess. That, that uh, ties us up quite nicely, I think. Yep, fairly wrapped um, up there. Lovely. We, uh, fairly wrapped up. Um, Lucifer Fulci's uh, Murder Rock. Would I recommend it? Mm, for a laugh. I think, if you can get yeah, if you're it. a Fulci completist, then why not? Um, you'll probably find something to enjoy about it. Um, if you've yeah. no idea who Fulci is, <laughs> don't go there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, maybe stay uh, away. <laughs> One thing that I did particularly enjoy about it was that apparently it was obviously it was released around the time of Flashdance, and uh, as was pointed out last night, it was in some territories released uh, under the title Slashdance, which is great. Which is great, yeah, it's absolutely lovely. Good bit of marketing. Just there. There was no it. slashing in it, but hey, <laughs> yeah, no slashing at all. 
Yep. Um, so we are uh, moving onwards and upwards. We are going to be back, we think, with an episode, uh, another chain episode next. Yep, I would say um, so. Um, we are pretty much in lockdown here. We do have a couple of ideas for side missions that we might go on, but um, we are going to wait and see how that pans out. Uh, obviously, we can't get to the cinema to see any new releases because all the cinemas are shut down. Um, but we are, so the next film, if you are following on with the chain, the next film, so we're taking the, Obviously, this film is called Murder Rock. Um, we are taking um, the term rock yes. to mean music, rock music. Oh, right. I thought we were going to do like a bunch of Dwayne Johnson films. Oh, we could do some. No, we're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we are going with uh, Lords of Chaos, yes. the uh, film about the Norwegian black metal scene of the mid-90s. Which we were very interested which, in to start with. So, which, yeah. which we were very interested in back in the day as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have some um, chat about our um, involvement when you say involvement, Not physically when you say in involvement. Scene, but our, <laughs> our, our interest in that scene at the actual time that it was happening, yeah. um, which um, uh, which is um, another story altogether. But uh, well, I bet yeah, that's so, people, like, um, I bet it's like people scan podcasts at the authorities, and that's like that's a total trigger word. Black yeah, metal, yeah, totally. art black involvement. <laughs> well, all the all the black metalers are now um, have all been outed as um, uh, Nazis, basically, haven't they? So yeah, double bonus. Yeah, so that's it. We're totally busted. <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah, well, thanks for listening. And I uh, hope you're all surviving well in this uh, weird, weird, weird um, lockdown uh, coronavirus situation. Uh, I was intrigued to read that um, Henry VIII was, uh, during his reign, there were, so ma- there were so many lockdowns due to the plague. Right. In his reign, that um, he got quite accustomed to it and actually liked staying indoors and being in his own private space. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Um, so I think, yeah, <laughs> so I'm sure that'll happen to us. Well, obviously, we don't have the rich years of Henry VIII. Yeah, but, um, or indeed the, uh, yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> uh, or the dead wives. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you next time for Lords of Chaos. Excellent. Bye bye. Yep. Bye.